Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 192, Digital Imaging with Photoshop for the spring semester 2022. Today, we're going to be working on um, Lesson 10, which uses the Mixer Brush tool. The Mixer Brush tool is to use to simulate traditional media. Media, yeah. Um, and your goal, which kind of ties into your goal for the the next assignment, since you've just finished your movie poster, is to now switch gears entirely and rather than to work photographically, try to loosen up and um, create what we call a digital painting. Okay. Now, I would prefer that the digital painting, and I think this would make it easier on all of you, um, to really loosen it up and to make it more impressionistic rather than realistic. Um, otherwise, if you're going to make it realistic, then just stick to a photograph. Now, the um, image that you will be making um, will be based on a photograph, just like this lesson, but you will be picking a photograph of your choice. Okay, so this is what the end of the assignment or the lesson looks like. Um, you can see that it's a, a landscape with a tree and some trees in the background and some grass in the foreground and stuff very painterly if we look at the the start file it's pretty typical looking uh, landscape photograph a nice one but um considerably different than what we see here okay the other part of the lesson which is what we will start with um is working with a palette so you can actually see what the mixer brush can do. There are lots of different brushes that are available. You can also create a custom brush, which is one of the things that are that's done in this lesson. Um, and uh, yeah, um, it simulates traditional, try to simulate traditional media. There are other programs that do um, the same thing, um, I think. Painter does probably a better job. Um, and it was designed to do specifically that. Now I will be using a mouse today, but typically the kind of um, um, tool that would be ideal would be to use um, a Wacom tablet. Um, are there any of you who are here today that not who don't know what a Wacom tablet is. Anybody? You don't, Bella? Okay. Um, let me see if I can't show it to you. Um, I don't have the space. So it looks, you know, they come in a variety of sizes. It looks like this, and it connects to your computer. And then what you have is a stylus. And the stylus, the newer stylus, works in multiple directions. So that if you um, uh, if you press hard on it, you just like you would with a regular paintbrush or pencil, you get a really fat, hard line. And when you ease up on it, then you get a lighter, thin line. Um, hold on here. Let me see. Okay, just uh, checking up Bella, that's fine. Um, anyway, uh, it also, depending on the kind of brush you're using, just like um, in the real world, if you were working with a round brush, it really wouldn't matter the angle that you're working at, um, but it would be dependent on the amount of pressure to determine the quality and the type of line that you were gonna get. Um, but with a flat brush, um, if you, you know, hold it flat and you spin it, um, you're going to get a thick, thin approach to it. Um, so we're kind of limited here um, by using the mouse. The mouse is a very awkward way of working. It's um, kind of like, uh, you know, trying to, to paint or draw with a bar of soap. It's kind of clunky. Um, that's kind of what I, how I see the, the mouse. Um, anyway. So that's what we'll be working with today. Um, in addition to that, as I said, uh, I don't know if we'll get to it today, probably Wednesday, but I have 
uh, video, as I mentioned, from lynda.com, formerly lynda.com, now LinkedIn Learning, that covers this topic where um, um, he goes through, the fellow goes through the, an entire lesson showing you how he creates his digital painting. Um, so that's what we'll be working with. Um, so let me go ahead and get started with, with this to give you an idea of how it works. Um, let's go over to the, to the right and make sure that we have brushes selected. If you don't see them, um, go to the window and select brushes. Okay. So if I turn that off, that's it goes away. Go to window, bring up brushes, and there's also a little tab for that if you don't see it. Um, there's another tool in conjunction with brushes that you will be using. And if we go to window again and we select brush settings, that is an additional um, element that we can go ahead and if we can pull that off if we want. Okay. And that allows us to create a new brush. It allows us to create uh, or to edit existing brushes and to customize them in a variety of ways. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and move this over to the side. And you can see also that it gives you a little preview of what the brush looks like. And here's all the other brushes. These are some of the basic brushes that are available to us. Um, for this lesson, though, one of the things that you are going to want to do is to load a series of brushes specifically for this assignment that are available from the classroom in a book series. And where you get those or how you load them, I'll go ahead and start that now. I've already loaded them. And you can see that I have a little folder for general brushes, a folder for dry brushes, a folder for wet brushes. And then um, we have special effects brushes, which are kind of cool. They're worth um, experimenting with. Um, and, you know, for your, your project, you may want to use them. And what we're going to have here are the classroom and a book landscape brushes right here. Those are the ones that you want to um, uh, to load into the into the program. And how you do that is with the brush tab available, you go to the upper right hand corner here and where it says down here, where are we going to find it? I want um, I want to import brushes right here. So when you click that should take you and if it doesn't go to the Adobe Photoshop, I don't want the 22 folder, I want the lesson folder that I have. So I'm going to go to desktop. I'm going to go to PS. Where is it? Photoshop. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. Um, I have the Cerritos folder and then I can go in there and I can go to the Photoshop folder down here. PS 2020 and we go to lesson 10 and you can see that the only thing that it's going to let me load if I want to, which I already have, is the classroom and a book landscape brushes. So there are third party brushes that are available for you. You can create your own brushes. It gets a bit overwhelming. There are more brushes than you would use um, if you were, had your own painting studio, to be quite honest. Okay. So to get started with this, we're going to work with the, this palette today. And I'm going to move this over a tad so you can see, make it a little bit larger. So let's just look at the tubes of toothpaste or tubes of toothpaste, tubes of paint first. <clears throat> and what you want to do over to the left now is make sure that you have the mixer brush tool. Now, if you don't see that because I have paint, the paint desktop selected, you might want to go up here. And if you had essentials selected, it would look a little bit different. Now hidden under the mixer brush tool is the brush tool, the pencil tool, color replacement tool and so on and so forth. But for us, for the painter, you know, to paint with, we just want the mixer brush. 
that's the one that this is working with. So I'm switching the desktop to painting instead. And you can see that we have the mixer brush right now. So what I want to do is I want to select maybe a 30 pixel um, soft round brush. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load it. So if we have the traditional um, options menu along the top. I'm going to click here. And it brings up uh, co the color picker, but I want to pick a color directly from the paint tube. So I click right here. It will load that red and I click OK. OK, now again, my computer is probably going to slow down a little bit because this is um, taxing on my computer as I'm, I'm broadcasting to all of you. And now what we can do is I can click and I can drag and you can see that I get kind of a nice soft airbrush feel to it. Now it's entirely on and off. If I were working with the Wacom tablet, it would start with a thin line. The harder that I press, the heavier it would be. You can also control that from the top here. Right now we're using this soft brush as a wet brush, the 50% um, wet, the load, meaning how much of the pigment it picks up is 50%. The mix is 50%, the flow is 100%. You have all these settings that you can play with that again, it gets a bit overwhelming from time to time. We can also pick, um, let's try a couple of other brushes here, show you the difference between them. I'll go ahead and I'll pick the blue now. So I'm gonna pick here on the color picker and I'm gonna pick a, a blue. And then I'm going to pick from over here, let's pick um, a smaller brush here, like a 10 pixel brush. You can see that I can get, you know, much finer lines here. We can also, if I pick um, the yellow or if I switch brushes to maybe a round fan brush that I can get a very soft, uh, but you know, different, it's not an airbrush look. Now notice that when the brush starts to lag, it doesn't work in real time. And that means it's really taxing on my computer. Um, and that's typically what you want to avoid. So the more RAM you have, the better video card and that stuff will allow you to work in real time. And again, if I weren't broadcasting with you, because um, the system is using 50% of its, of its operating power to, to work right now, then, um, it would um, be a little bit better and get a better um, a idea of what we want to do. Now, let me go ahead and pick another one now. Let's pick um, the yellow. So I'll pick from here. And let's, um, again, I'm going to use the eyedropper and pick a nice bright yellow from here. Actually, let's move that up so it's really bright. I'll just pick a different the, they have you pick um, specific brushes. I'm picking um, kind of a random brush here. I don't want that one. I want something that really shows texture. Let's try this one. And if you want to make a brush on the fly, bigger or smaller, you hit the left or the right bracket key on your keyboard. And now when I click and I drag, you can see at the ends how it, you can see the individual little bristles. So that gives you an idea, you know, feel free to experiment and just to play with it. Um, I think that's the best way of learning with this tool is to experiment. If I go back to the, um, the 30 pixel brush and I move over a tad here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to show you how it actually works when you work wet into wet. Um, it's like working with um, wet oils and how they you can actually mix colors on the fly on, on, on the a surface itself. What I would encourage you to do um, is that we have is what they've done here in the lesson is that they have a background layer and then they have on top of that, we have our paint mix layer. And then if you don't want to see the circles, they're on a separate layer. 
because everything that you see here, including the background, can be considered a painting surface that the brushes can mix with. Um, and I'll show you what happens when we try, you know, do that. Um, so I'm going to start with a soft brush. I'm going to start with the red, and I'm going to go ahead and load it with the red here. Um, let's go ahead and come over here and click a nice bright red. Show you what it does. And I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger just for the heck of it. And what I want to do is I want to come over here and I want to paint. Okay, I'm just painting a big swatch. And I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to paint this big swatch here, just so you can see. And now what I want to do is I want to show you how, if I pick a different color now, I'll just use the same brush. But now work with the blue. If um, you have if had any color theory, or even if you don't, you know, your primary colors are um, red, blue, uh, and yellow. Um, then if you mix blue with red, you're going to get violet. So if I switch the color here and let's load with the, the, the blue brush or blue paint. Okay. And um, leave the settings here. And these are important too. This one allows you to load the color. These two are really important too, as well as this one. That you can work with dry brushes, wet brushes. However, you know, whatever your needs are, they're available here. What this does, though, it allows you to clear the brush or clean the brush after every stroke when it's, um, uh, or load the brush, I'm sorry, after every stroke. This one over here um, cleans the brush after every stroke. So now what I can do is with the blue selected, I'm going to click in here and start to paint. And you can see it's starting to turn not a blue blue, but uh, more of a violet. If I paint over here, you can see the difference between this blue and this one. Okay, that what, by painting it, it's actually mixing with the red. Likewise, when we come down here, let's go ahead and switch to um, <clears throat> a yellow or maybe the green and then add in. So let's go back to the red again. Um, uh, let's go back to the red. So I'm going to pick the red once again, or I'll just pick it from here. What the heck? And then I'm going to move down here. Let's paint with the red again. Let's say I want to create an orange. Well, if I mix the red and the yellow, that's what I'm going to get. So I'll click again. And let's pick a nice solid yellow and begin to mix with it down here. And you can see that as I paint with it, it turns yellow, or the yellow added with the red turns orange. And likewise, if I paint over here, you see the solid yellow, but over here, it's mi mixing with the red. Likewise, if I go ahead and I paint the yellow here, really bright, and let's go ahead and change the color again to green or blue rather. Let's go ahead and, and go to the blue. Um, the yellow and the blue are gonna turn green mixed together. So likewise, if I switch, when I come over here, you can see that it's not blue, it's turning green. Kind of cool, it really is. Um, with Painter, you have the option of working with different um, paper textures and all sorts of things to really simulate both dry and wet media, from oils to watercolors to charcoal to pencil and that sort of thing. It works really, really nice. So that's the start file. End file looks a bit like this. It's similar to what I just did. You know, experimenting with a few different brushes here. Okay. Um, the next step then is to look at the landscape. <clears throat> so this is, you know, after you've loaded the brushes, what you want to do is we want to look here 
And we actually, what we've done is they've taken the round fan brush. <clears throat> and if we look at um, the uh, create a custom brush, if we look at the, the brush and we look at the brush settings, you can see that there's all different ways of doing this, of um, controlling the shape. So it's round fan, um, fan. We can control the number of bristles, the bristle length, the thickness, the sh stiffness, and the angle of the brush, um, the spacing of the brush. So watch if I increase the spacing and I decrease the spacing, you can see the effects that we're getting here, okay? Very nice. So what they're having us do, and I won't bore you with this, but creating a custom brush we're taking that brush and we're going to go ahead and change the size to 36 pixels and we're going to change the shape make sure that it's round fan which is what i already have i'm going to change the number of bristles to 35 percent instead of 66 percent um, let's go ahead and i said that i wasn't going to do that let's go ahead and do that so let's go ahead and um, change the brush size to 30 um, 6 35 36 pixels Well, that's the bristles. Sorry, I wanted to change the size. Size is up here. Never mind. That's 35. So it's a little bit smaller, but it's easy to make, as I said, to make a brush bigger or smaller just by hitting the left or right bracket key. Um, number of bristles here are going to be 35%. Um, so I'm going to take it from 40 to 35, it's not exact, it's no biggie. The length 32%, so let's find the length from 25 to 30. You can make them really long, you can make really change, you know, change this up like crazy. So 32 having trouble controlling the slider here. I'll leave it 41%, why not? Thickness, 2%. It's already close to that. I can always put in the settings here, 2%. And I said the length was supposed to be what? 32%, it was close. 32. Stiffness, um, 75%. Lots of variables that can, as I said, can be overwhelming. Leave the angle at zero and the spacing at zero, or the spacing at 2%. <clears throat> okay. And now when you're ready, if we hit the little plus sign, just like what we've done in other instances with adding new um, colors to our palette and that sort of thing, if I click down here at the bottom, it's going to prompt me. And what I want, I'm going to go ahead and name this sky brush. Okay. Include tool settings. That's kind of important. Now when I click, it's been added to that, okay? I have a sky brush, which is different than the round fan, round fan brush. But what they have done, you know, they've given us lots of brushes to work with, with already preset colors. I'm gonna close the brush settings and I'm gonna show you the, again, the finished or the end product here. So that's really very loose and it's working directly on the painting the, or the underlying photograph. Now you can mix colors and use the colors directly from the photograph, or you can paint on top of it and apply a whole set of different colors. Um, but they're trying to make it easy for us by applying these brushes in the areas that are labeled um, and paint directly on top. So really the goal to make it work for you is to eradicate the photograph underneath. And that's pretty much it. 
So let me go ahead and um, switch back to the, the start file. And I'll show you how I would work. Now, I would never work on the background layer. Never, never, never. I always would make a, prefer to make a copy of that. And we can turn off the background one in case we need it to bring back some of the original images. So let's start with the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use that sky brush. Let's go back up here. And if you wanted to add clouds, you could do that. And again, if I want to make the brush bigger, I can. And it's kind of not really doing what I had hoped. But instead, what I would prefer to do is use the sky brush here. And now if I come back here, and if I notice that when I draw in here, it's creating these really nice um, strokes. And if I work from here, notice that it's a little bit slow to catch up, but it's taking the colors from the tree and applying it um, to the sky. I don't want that just yet, okay? Because it's slowing everything down. But what I can do here is let's, I'm gonna work with a little bit smaller brush. There we go. And instead of working with a blue, I'm gonna work with white. Or what I can also do is I can clear the brush up here, empty it, and now it's just smearing colors together. And so I can paint and I can draw like so. Notice how it's smearing and I'm working with, I'm just eradicating everything beneath it. Okay, kind of cool. So it's like taking oils that are wet, you know, that you're working from a photograph, but imagine if you would, that they were, um, it was constructed of oil paint, wet, and now I'm just taking different brushes and smearing them. Okay, so we're just gonna do part of this today. Um, and then what I want to do is um, show you some samples of some finished pieces. But, you know, that's starting with the sky. Let's go back down here to, um, we have green highlights. Let's see the foreground, let's work with a foreground tree right here. And now what I can do is I can come back in here and it's a little tedious, but what we can do is we can zoom in a little bit and you can see that I, I'm just, the goal is to come back on top of the, the tree here and I can eradicate the, um, the painting underneath. And you don't have to be precise. In fact, that's the whole goal is to not be precise. And I'm just, you know, you work from the top and work your way down. And then as it, you know, tells you in here, you know, which which colors are you going to work with, um, you know, for the, the background trees brush, um, that's just kind of a yellowish color down here. So we can work with the background colors here. And if you want to change the size of the brushes or add, you know, change any qualities to them, you can. So let me find my cursor here. There we go. So now we can go back in here. And I'm just using a little bit, you know, lighter green, almost yellowish to eradicate the brushes, the, um, the tree foliage back here. You know, I'm leaving some of the branches, but I probably wouldn't even, if I were working on my own, I wouldn't even do that. Just a little bit at a time. And again, um, depending on the processor speed and the RAM you have and that sort of thing will determine how quickly you can work. Um, let's work with the grass in the foreground so you can see what I'm doing here. And if I click and I drag, I'm holding down the mouse. Notice that it's painting now with the, this grass in the foreground, these little um, individual uh, 
blades of grass. Okay, and we can work with everything in between. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today and show you how to work it, how to make sure that you understand how to import the brushes that are included with the lessons. <clears throat> and then um, what you'll turn in is both the palette, the finished palette and the, the finished um, version of the, um, the painted tree. Now, what's also kind of cool, they don't tell you about, but what I can do, and here's some other features here that um, if, if you want, you can sample all layers. So you need to be careful when you do that, um, because that will include, like I said, if we were to go back to the, the palette, let's go ahead and go back to the start palette. And if I were to sample all layers, it's going to include the, um, I got to switch to a different brush now. It's going to include um, the palette here. Notice that it's doing some weird stuff here. If I were to um, go ahead and empty the brush, uh, let's go ahead, let's empty it. I don't have the paint, the brush that I had hoped, wanted. I'm going to go back to, um, I'm going to go back to the soft round brush. And let's make sure that I say sample all layers. And notice the brown is now spilling out into the white area and I'm sort of eradicating it and it's mixing, the brown is mixing with the white as well. That's because it's mixing with the background. Now, if you want, you can turn this off. And as long as you don't resize the, um, the canvas area, there is another tool that if we, I don't want the color replacement tool, but I'm gonna switch gears here. Let's go back to here. I want to use the history brush. And if I use the history brush, um, it will allow me to go back and it's like a magic eraser that allows me to bring everything back to the original file. But the problem with this is, is that if you change the canvas or you, you know, change some of the settings, um, it won't allow you to do this. So, you know, give it a try. Um, if you're working also like I, like I have on a separate layer and not working on the background layer, you can always, you know, work from that and bring elements of it back into your, your painting. So you can work back and forth. Um, from the photograph, you're layering paint on top of it. Because if I turn this background off, see what we have. And the same would be true for my um, landscape. Here's the start file that I started with. If I turn that off, see, I painted on that, a copy of that layer. I could also paint on a brand new layer on top of that as well. So let's do that, and then I can isolate parts of it, and um, it will enable me to um, to turn parts of it off, work with it back on. If I want, let's go back. Um, it, I think by working on different layers, it allows you um, different flexibility. So let's work with a tree highlights brush here. If I can work back in here, and notice, see how it's not mixing with the the paint itself, it's just painting directly on top of it. However, if I work with a background, if, with this one, and I paint, notice that it's mixing with that. And I can always turn that upper layer off. So there's a whole variety of ways that you can work that are impossible to do in, with traditional media. Um, it does have, a, this has a commercial fine art function to it. I don't know if you're aware of it, but um, one of the things that you can do is um, there are a number of restaurants, there are a number of uh, 
hospitals, um, commercial venues that, um, that buy artwork, you know, and um, to paint e these pieces individually would be kind of time consuming and you really wouldn't get much money for them. So what you could do is if you created your digital painting and you were happy with it and your client was happy with it, one of the things that you could do is you could um, make prints of them and print them on canvas, then come back and um, you know stretch the canvas and you could sell them as multiples and um, actually make a pretty decent living doing that. Um, what I wanted to show you is I'm going to go to Pinterest here. <clears throat> and I've saved a whole a number of these that are um, really quite nice. So when you're thinking about, you know, what you want to do for your, um, your digital painting, a landscape would be good. It doesn't have to be a landscape. It could be a portrait. It could be a figure painting. Um, it can be, you know, whatever you want. But here are some excellent samples here. So let's come back. Um, I'll show you how to get to them, though. I'm going to go back to, oh, come on. I'm going to skip for now. I don't want animals, although I have lots of photographs of my animals. Um, oh, shoot. Let me go back to, uh, come on. Let's go back. I don't want. Okay, that was to that. Let me go to, oh shoot. If I go to my settings here, there we go. I have settings for movie posters, for Pinterest likes, selfie portraits. Um, the one that I wanted you to take note of though was, or is it digital paintings right here? And so how do you get to these? If um, you go to my website, so let me go ahead and create a new link here. And I go to kmart66.com and you scroll down to the bottom. Here is the link to Pinterest right here. And you'll have access to, to the images that I've saved that give you a, a pretty good idea of what's possible. Um, some really good examples. So again, if I go back to the digital paintings, you can see a whole bunch of different samples that I thought were really quite nice. Now, there are some people that paint pretty realistic looking um, paintings with this tool. But that's not necessarily what I'm looking for. Um, typically, they have very fast computers. They have large Wacom tablets, um, any number of ways. But you know, I've included some figurative work as well as landscapes in here. Here's a good example of a, um, a digital portrait that I you never mistake for being real, but looks pretty representational. Okay, the rest of these I think are really quite handsome. Okay. So there are some good examples for you as well. Now, the one thing that I'm going to do next is we're going to start watching. Um, we won't finish it today, but we're going to start watching. Um, uh, as I said, the from LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn Learning. Um, let me make sure that I have it here. Let's go back over here. And it should be here. There we go. John Derry. So um, I'm going to stop recording because if I continue to record with this, it will be infringing on his copyrights. Um, I have recorded these and saved them on Canvas so that just those of you in the class can review these. There's a couple of these um, classes that he's done that I want or courses that he's done that I wanted to share with you. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop recording, pause recording, 
and then we're going to watch him for a little bit today and then that will be it unless you guys have any questions for me yes no no questions i think this is the fun part of of uh, photoshop myself so for those of you who have a, oh okay unrelated question go for it jonathan Okay, which file are you talking about? Which file got corrupted? Let me go ahead and um, pause the recording here.